Hey, Grace Point Church. As you know, we've been walking through the whole Bible in a year. We're getting the big picture of God's redemptive story throughout the entire Old and New Testament. We've been spending seven months in the Old Testament, and just last week we finally got into the New Testament. And this month we're going to be covering Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and looking at the differences and uniquenesses of each of the way that they portray Jesus' story. Last week we talked about Matthew and we learned Jesus is the Messiah. He's the anointed one and we are to be his disciples and Matthew's trying to prove that to us. And this week we're going to be studying the book of Mark and we're going to be looking at the really engaging and exciting story that Mark presents. It's like a mini documentary series. But at the end of our service last week, uh, if you were there, you know I, I handed out a bunch of these. We've got a few of these left, but this is a book called Gentle and Lowly, and it's called The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers. This is the book that the elders and wives are going through together this year in terms of, of learning how to be leaders like Jesus and, and drawing near to the heart of Jesus. But I gave each of you a copy of this because, because it's, it's inspired by those words in Matthew 11 and from the Gospels of Jesus sharing his heart. And so as an encouragement to you, I just wanted to read a little bit of this first chapter of this book. I love this book. I hope you have time to read it in, in your devotions. And he's really trying to give us an idea of who Jesus is, the sort of God that we serve. And in chapter 1, the author, it's titled His Very Heart, uh, begins this way. He says, My dad pointed out to me something that Charles Spurgeon pointed out to him. In the four gospel accounts given to us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 89 chapters of biblical text, there's only one place where Jesus tells us about his own heart. We learn much in the four Gospels about Christ's teaching. We read of his birth and his ministry and, and his disciples and the way he fulfilled the Old Testament. We find lengthy speeches. But in only one place, he says, perhaps the most wonderful words ever uttered by human lips, do we hear Jesus himself open up to us his very heart. And this is what he says. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. The author says, In the one place in the Bible where the Son of God pulls back the veil and lets us peer way down into the core of who Jesus is, we are not told that he is austere and demanding in heart. We are not told that he is exalted and, and dignified in heart. We are not even told that he is joyful and generous in heart. Letting Jesus set the terms, his surprising claim is that he is gentle and lowly in heart. If we are asked to say only one thing about who Jesus is, we would be honoring Jesus' own teaching if our answer is gentle and and lowly. But the author is right when he continues. He says, this is not how we intuitively think of Jesus Christ. We project onto Jesus our skewed instincts about how the world works. Human nature dictates that the wealthier a person, the more they tend to look down on the poor. The more beautiful a person, the more they are put off by the ugly. And without realizing what we are doing, we quietly assume that one so high and exalted as Jesus has corresponding difficulty drawing near to the despicable and unclean. Sure, Jesus comes close to us, we agree, but he holds his nose up high. This risen Christ, after all, is the one whom God has highly exalted, at whose name every knee will one day bow in submission. This is the one whose eyes are like a flame of fire and whose voice is like the roar of many waters and who has a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth and whose face is like the sun shining in full strength. That's from Revelation 1. In other words, this is one so unspeakably brilliant that his 
resplendence cannot adequately be captured with words so ineffably magnificent that all language dies away before his splendor. But he says, this is the one whose deepest heart is more than anything else gentle and lowly. This high and holy Christ, I love this, does not cringe at reaching out and touching dirty sinners and numbed sufferers. Such embrace is precisely what Jesus loves to do. He cannot bear to hold back. We naturally think of Jesus touching us the way a little boy reaches out to touch a slug for the first time, face screwed up, cautiously extending an arm, giving a yelp of disgust upon contact, and instantly withdrawing. We picture the risen Christ approaching us with a severe and sour disposition. This is why we need a Bible. Our natural intuition can only give us a God like us. But the God revealed in the scripture deconstructs our intuitive um, predictions and startles us with one whose infinitude of perfections is matched by his infinitude of gentleness. Indeed, his perfections include his perfect gentleness. It is who he is. It is his very heart. Jesus himself said so. Don't you love that? That is Matthew. That is the Messiah. And therefore, we are his disciples. And to be a disciple is to come to Jesus when we are weary and we are tired, we are exhausted, and he will give us rest. So that was Matthew. And I'm looking forward to Mark this week. We're going to be in our sanctuary. We're going to be studying the book of Mark together. The week after, we're going to look at Luke. And the week after, we're going to check out John. So I pray that this month, you get to see Jesus as the fulfillment of this story. And you're able to draw close to him.